today's video, we're going to be building a cinematic drone. Now, this is going to be a three part series where we do the building in the first part, the programming in the second part, and the final part will be the PID tuning. So I'm planning on going to super depth into this and also make it as beginner friendly as possible. So let's quickly break down some of the components here and tell you why I've used these components for this setup. Now, let's start off with the frame. For the frame, I'm using the iFly SL5. Now, iFly's frame are some of the best frames for freestyle and also cinematic footage. Not only that, they are of great quality and at a really good price. So this is the reason why I'm going with iFly here. This is the SL5 and it is also linked down below. They also have a bunch of accessories, for example, the GoPros. They even provide you with ND filters. So it's really nice overall. And even this video transmitter holder, or it could be a receiver holder, which we'll get into later on. This is a 3D printed TPU part that will go on the back of the frame here. And we'll get into that part once we get to that stage. Now let's talk about the components or electrical components. Now for ESC, we're gonna be using Mumba F60 Pro. This is the latest ESC, which is an insane little beast and I will be testing it on this setup here. I need something that could handle quite a lot because this quadcopter is gonna go through a lot of abuse and also a lot of use. Now for the flight controller, I decided to go with the Diatone Mumba System F405 DJI. Now this is a really interesting stack due to a couple reasons. It can run DJI right out of the box and also analog right out of the box so if i ever want to switch over to the dji setup i can just do that with one simple connector which is amazing here so this is the reason why i've chosen this. it's an f405 and it has just about everything you need so this is a really great setup right here now for video transmitter i decided to do something a little bit more interesting i wanted to use this super tiny rush fpv video transmitter and i'm also using the latest rush fpv uh, antennas here which are really great they come two in a box and they have all these special mounting stuff that makes your life so much easier as you can tell and you'll get to see how this is set up in a bit and they also have this special latching mechanism which will give you a much better grip onto the ipex port because they are pretty flimsy and this is just absolutely phenomenal what they've done here they are the first to do it so the rush tiny tank is going to be our video transmitter for this build now for receiver the thing that's going to be controlling your quadcopter i'm using the xm plus radio because i have a bunch of these and they're really small really cheap and they just work perfect. I never had a single issue with them. Now, also for the camera, I'm using the Run Cam Racer Nano here. This latency testing was absolutely phenomenal and also it's going to reduce a lot of weight and I'm trying to reduce as much weight as I possibly can with this build in order to make it as efficient as possible. And again, everything here is linked down below. So if you can check those out, those greatly support the channel. And for motors, I want to go budget. I don't want to go premium, even though I have a bunch of premium motors, but I want to go budget because I will be breaking them and I just want to be able to quickly just buy a bunch and just have them just laying around. Whenever I break one, I could just quickly repair it in the field. So we're using the Emacs 2207-2400KV. So this is a 4S build right now. This is a 4S cinematic build because I still have a bunch of 4S lipos here that I really want to just keep enjoying. Now, this build should be a super quick build. So let's go ahead and get started here. Now, for tools, I really recommend these. These are the hex driver titanium coated tools which i've been using i think for the past three years now the same set and has been working flawlessly it is also linked down below very cheap and highly recommended you pick up some of these because you wouldn't want to strip any of the screws that are currently in your quadcopter because that'll be an absolute nightmare and sometimes render your whole frame useless so keep that in mind that's very important so the first step that i usually like to do is start out with the flight controller solder up everything that needs to go to it for example we have our receiver we have our video transmitter and we also have our camera. Now, before getting started, make sure you prep all the wires, which means strip and then twist and then add some solder and trim them to the length. About this much is pretty good, which is around two millimeters, I would say. So since we have the receiver in our hands, let's go ahead and start with the receiver. So first of all, let's start preparing the paths. We're gonna need ground five volt signal, which is going to be this one. And if you're like, how the hell am I knowing all this? They do have an instruction manual, which tells you where everything goes. So let's go ahead and prepare those pads together so you get an idea of how I go about doing this. So first pad we're gonna start off with is ground. Usually anything that's labeled ground takes longer to add solder to because it's distributed all around the board. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes you have to keep the soldering iron there just a tad bit longer. So what I like to do first is I like to just heat up the pad first and then come in with the solder while the soldering iron is still on the pad. And just like that, we just added solder to that pad. Next one over is gonna be the five volt, which is gonna be the one right below it. Now, as you can tell, don't solder this way because we have a high probability of hitting something from here. So what I always recommend doing is 
you would go ahead and flip it make it straight towards you now just a side note here if you're right-handed it's always best to start off from the left side so when you move along you have less probability of hitting something so for example we finished this one first then we went to this one instead of doing this one and then moving to this one have high probability of hitting the one that we just made so this is the best way to do it and now and again as you can tell you can see it in action right now that we are moving to the right so like this now we have prepared our pals let's go ahead and set up the wires i'm going to start from the left side and move to the right because i am right handed here and i want these wires to be inward so they don't pop out of the frame so the first one here was the ground so let's go ahead and heat that up and then bring in our wire and there we go so now we have our ground next one was five volts so again what i'm doing here is i'm heating up the pad and then i bring in the wire and then just hold the soldering iron right on top so I'll just heat up the pad again until it melts, bring in the wire, and then just put the soldering iron right on top of it. All right, and we're gonna do the last one together here so you can see it better. So I'm gonna heat up the pad, and then I'm gonna bring in the wire, and then just move my soldering iron over the wire, and that should be good. And then we just double check everything. All right, and that's looking good. I really like how this came out. So right now our receiver is basically done here. So now the next thing I wanna set up is the camera. And the camera is gonna to go to these three pads right now. So let's go ahead and just add solder to them really quickly. And then we'll see what goes where from the wires that are coming in from the camera. There we go. And just make sure they heat up nice so they get good connection here. All right, that's looking good. So now and again, I'm going to start with the left side and move down to the right. So the first thing we have here is going to be the 5 volts. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. And I'm just going to heat up both of them at the same time. And just wait for it. You don't want to heat up for too long, especially if they have holes, because then the solder would start to drip to the other side. Next one is ground, so it's going to be the black wire for the camera, which is the black wire. There we go. So we have that into place. And the last one right here is going to be video. So now like this, we've completed the camera as well as the receiver part. The last thing we need to set up here is going to be our video transmitter. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this into the back right here just to make my life a little bit easier. Cause this is where it goes and this is why I really love this frame. So you can kind of see how that's gonna just keep everything really, really clean here. All right, and now we need to figure out where the VTX is gonna go. And I think it goes all the way up here if I remember correctly. So now we're gonna jump into the video transmitter part. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is so I can show you the color coding here. So we have cam, which is supposed to be the video input line, usually on any other video transmitter, say video in, which is gonna be the yellow line. Next we have data, which is going to be smart audio here. So smart audio is gonna be our data, ground is black, and then plus five volt is the five volt that we're gonna be using to power this guy. So first we said the white wire was going to be our smart audio and that's going to go to the TX pad, which is going to be this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with this one. Or actually we should start off from the top. It'll make it much easier as we go down here. So we'll start off with the red, which is five volts. All right, just make sure they're nice. Okay. VTX is going to be our yellow line. So we'll set that up. Might be a bit too long here. And then next, we're going to go ahead and set up the TX3 right here, which is going to be the smart audio. So we keep that in mind. Maybe get a piece of paper and write TX3 for smart audio. So when we set this up in Betaflight, you'll know uh, which TX you used. All right. And now we have our ground. So now like this, we have basically everything done here. We have our receiver. We have our video transmitter. And we also have our camera. Uh, there's nothing else that I can think of right now that needs to go to the flight controller. Now the connection between the electronic speed controller and the flight controller is going to be done with this cable right here, which is provided in the packaging. Definitely pick up this stack together. And by stack, I mean the flight control and the ESC. Pick them up together so you get all the proper uh, equipment you need. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and remove the flight controller out because we're going to start working on the ESC. So on the ESC, it's basically the same concept. What I like to do is prepare the pads first. So let's go ahead and do that together. We'll probably just do one together here. It's the same concept. I like just to heat up the pad first, and then I bring in the solder next to the soldering iron while I'm still touching the pad with the soldering iron here. Just make sure you get it nice and toasty. And there we go, or nice and hot, because some people don't like it when I say toasty. Now these are gonna be a little bit more difficult to heat up because the heat dissipation is really, really good. And usually when you get an ESC that's really hard to solder to, just like this one, that means it's going to be able to handle a lot of heat, which is really great. 
Uh, that means it's going to last longer and be able to handle more abuse than any other one. So now what I've done here is I've increased my soldering iron temperature to 440 degrees Celsius. So this way it'll allow me to transfer the heat much better. And make sure your, your soldering iron tip just always looks shiny. You don't want it not to look shiny at all. There we go. And we're going to do one more together here. Just wait for it. If your soldering iron tip is not shiny, add some solder because the shinier it is, the better the heat transfer is going to be. So keep that in mind. And that's why we like to keep it as shiny as possible. So now like this, our EAC is basically complete. However, I was not recording while I was installing the XT60. And I do apologize for that. I forgot to press record. So we have the plus, which is going to be the red side. And the minus is going to be the black side of the XT60. Now they also do provide you with a low ESR capacitor that would go into these holes. Um, but it was too big for this kind of setup. So I went ahead with a Rubicon. So I went ahead with a 470 microfarad Rubicon 35 volt low ESR capacitor. It just fits overall much better on the bottom of the frame. And also make sure there's no way in hell that these two will touch each other or touch the carbon fiber or that's a direct short circuit and you can fire your whole thing. So just keep that in mind and just be aware of that. Also in soldering, make sure nothing also seeps downwards and basically touches together because that does happen sometimes. So you just got to be very, very careful. And this right here, I usually 3D print a bunch of these. I find them on Thingiverse. I'll have them linked down below if you wanted to use them. They are very valuable and useful, especially in holding your XC60. So now our ESC's power is basically complete. What we're going to do is we're going to install the motors. Now I'm going to do just one motor together with you. It doesn't matter the orientation right now. Just install them. And later on in, the, in part two, I'll show you how to fix the orientation. Also double check everything and how to change that. And uh, I'm going to start heating up one of the pads here. And again, as you can tell, I'm starting from the left because I am uh, right handed. And then I'm just going to heat up the pad then bring the wire after we have preheated the, the pad and just let that sink in. This is by far one of the most difficult ESCs I've ever soldered because of the heat dissipation is so good on this. I also do highly recommend use uh, some sort of tweezers because these wires are getting really, really hot. So just be very careful. Because the last thing you want to do is let go of the wire and it just flings out and it just releases a bunch of solder everywhere. And that could be an absolute nightmare. Make sure while I'm moving it, I can feel the, uh, the little holes or the vias that were on the pad itself here. It's, um, that's getting pretty tough here. That's crazy. The heat dissipation is insane. I've never seen anything like this before. Okay. So that's good. It's um it's it's a nightmare right now because of how difficult it is to actually get this to go in. So right now I'm not gonna preheat the pad. I'm just gonna go in with the wire. It's seeming to work a little bit better like this. Okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the motors off camera, come back, and then we finish up the rest. So now it's gonna be time to install our flight control. Now, as you can tell, this is the back of the quadcopter where the battery leads are going. It's very important you set it up in this orientation where the ESC's battery is in the back. Next, we're gonna go ahead and grab the flight controller and look for the arrow key and make sure that's pointing towards the front of the quadcopter. Now I know my front is this way here. All right, so we have that set into place. Now we're gonna grab our video transmitter here. And before we actually install this 3D printed part, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the screws and the nuts that come with the antenna here. So again, these FPV, these Rush FPV antennas are just absolutely amazing. As you can tell, you get two in the package whenever you purchase any of them. And these are the screws that I was talking about here. And you'll see how they fit. It's actually really intelligent and very, very convenient. And it just keeps your overall build very clean here. So for this, we're gonna need a 1.5 millimeter. And we're going to go ahead and grab the 3D printed part. And as you can tell, it has a hole. Now it goes all the way through, but it doesn't really hold anything. And the reason for that is because the nut goes into the plastic piece right there. It'll actually sink in and uh, grab the nut itself here. So you could actually see that going, starting to go inside right there, which is really, really useful. And there we go. Just like that, you see the nuts that go right into the plastic piece and then the, it just holds the nut right into place. And this is not coming off anytime soon. So this is just really convenient and it makes the overall build very clean here. So now we're just going to go ahead and drop in this 3D printed part just like so. So if we take a closer look at it from far away, you can see how clean that is. That's just looking absolutely beautiful here. So the reason why I soldered the receiver inwards here, because we don't want these to stick out and then come back in. This way it keeps them much cleaner. Uh, we're gonna figure out something for the antennas in a bit here, but right now I'm just gonna route them through the back. 
just temporarily. I think I'm just going to end up double side taping it to the bottom here or right next to the capacitor. We'll see what we're going to do with this. So another little awesome feature about this frame here is it could take both a mini and a micro camera. And uh, what the, w the way you're able to do that is they give you these 3D printed parts. Once you set them in with the carbon fiber, then you're able to install a micro camera. However, I'm using a nano, but it comes with a micro adapter. So it turns it into a so it turns it basically into a micro. And that's how I've set that up here. And again, I'll have everything linked down below. If I do forget to add anything, let me know and I'll make sure I take care of that for you guys. So now I got these little plastic pieces and I'm just going to cut one in half and I'll show you where this is going to go. It's going to be for our antenna protectors. See, this is another reason why I really love the iFlight frames. They give you everything you need. As you can tell, we got this, it just makes everything so clean. Now we can route receivers and antennas through those plastic pieces and it'll just keep the overall build again, very clean and uh, just really nice. And that's something you always want because these antennas, once you chop one up, you're gonna have to order some new ones. They might take forever to arrive. So it's really recommended to have some extras with you always because that will really reduce your distance quite dramatically here. So right now I'm going to add the final touches here. We're going to come back and take a look at it and see what's the next step. All right, guys. And like this, it's complete. So this is going to be part one. However, I did also forget to mention one thing. The connector ribbon between the flight controller and the ESE. I forgot to show that because uh, I just remembered like two minutes ago. So don't forget that ribbon cable that connects both the ESC and also the flight controller which is that white one that's going inside from the bottom there to the top. So make sure you get that set into place. Now for the receiver, I just used double-sided tape to hold it back here. And obviously we have a video transmitter tucked in in this 3D printed part. You can see how clean this build came out to be. Our small low ESR capacitor there. And we also have this 3D printed part, which I'll, have a, which I'll leave a link to down below so you can get it. So this will keep it away from the propellers. So none of your battery uh, leads could get cut or anything like that. Now for the motors, what I've done here is I've just used tape to hold them into place. This works best, especially if you want to work on it, you could easily just remove it. Uh, which is also really good and again everything here is linked down below so you can go ahead and check it out and you can tell how beautiful the rush fpv antennas were how they just fit absolutely perfect and also the iFlight frame is just the overall well put together package so in the next part of the video what we're going to do is we're going to do the binding process also the beta flight configuration and as well as the motor configuration so everything that has to do deal with programming is what we're going to do then once we take it out then we'll do the pin tuning together as well as the flight footage so uh, stay tuned. This is going to be a three part series, possibly four, depending on how much tune or filtration you might need. So I'm going to make sure I cover everything in depth in the series. Hopefully it's a three part series. Next one would be the programming from beta flight to the motor orientation to the binding, just about everything you might want to know. And also make sure you check the links down below where I'll have the playlist for this and also the link to every single component I've used here. And well, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.